Today, I'm going to show you this really cool color grading technique. Now, it's simple to make, but in order to get this exact look, we got to do a little bit of compositing. So just go ahead and copy this no tree setup. Super awesome intro. High quality. Quality, quality, quality. Alrighty, now we could do this in the color tab, but there's other elements that we need to add, so it just makes sense to do this in Fusion. The first step is to find the hero shot. This is going to be the most important frame of your clip. Something like this right here. I want Reyna's arms to glow. So what we're gonna do is hit shift space to bring up the select tool page, and we're gonna type in HSL here i don't want it connected to the main pipeline so what you could do is hold left shift left click and drag it up then we're gonna take the output of media in one and connect it to this hsl here and if you want you can hold left alt and click that pipeline to add a pipe router so that way things stay a little bit more organized it's also helpful to look at two screens at once so i'm going to hit this right here and then media in one i'm going to hit one on my keyboard and the hsl here i'm going to hit two on my keyboard all you got to do is uh grab this eyedropper tool right here and then just click and drag the colors you want but here's the thing it's backwards so we got to uncheck invert bam more than likely you're not going to be able to get the entire colors you want because if i click just the fingertip it doesn't select all of reina's hand if i click and drag on the finger i can select more of that color range but what ends up happening is if i drag too much now i'm selecting a little bit of the background so there's a little bit of finessing that we need to do i'm gonna reset this node i'm gonna select this fingertip and just kind of drag down a little bit until i start getting everything I want and uh oh we got this so to remove this color area I'm gonna select the negative eyedropper and then just click on that area you can also add individual colors by selecting the plus and then just you know clicking on the colors you want the idea here is to get as much of the color as possible before you start oh no but anyways, the idea here is to select as much of that color as possible. I'm just ruining this. The idea here is to select as much of this color as possible without getting the background or any other color you, you don't want. Obviously, though, this isn't good. I mean, like if we zoom in here, it's kind of pixelated. Like it, it's just not clean looking. So we have to fix the mat. Now, if you don't know what a mat is, uh, you can click this button right here. It's a black and white image. It's basically an old school way of rotoscoping things we don't really want gray tones and we definitely don't want these pixelated areas so let's fix it i'm just gonna turn that back on guess what we have a matte finesse setting mess around with it that's really the only thing that i can tell you <laughs> like you, you just kind of adjust things until your matte starts looking better now there is another setting here uh, setting two. This is another good way of fixing your mat. Again, everything kind of just does something else. So just mess with your settings and just see what you can get out of this. Once you have everything keyed that you want, uh, drop in a merge node and then connect your HSL here to that merge. And then you can hit two on your keyboard and nothing changes. But don't worry because all you have to do is add in a color corrector node and bring down your saturation to zero. Look at that. Now we can play this back and you can see we have a black and white image and only the purple colors are showing. This is when you can go crazy and just kind of do your own thing with it. Now personally, I added a glow to Reyna's hands. And to do that, all you have to do hit shift space, type in uh, soft glow and add it right after the HSL here because remember, this is just Reyna's hands. Then we have the glow and then it gets tied into the main pipeline. Now you could try and mess with all these settings to get something that's nice looking or you could download a free plugin from Reactor. It has hundreds of effects that you can download for free. What I used was a uh, node called Xglow. After some tweaking, this is what you can get. And I just think this looks way better than the soft glow or stacking different nodes together to get this sort of effect. Now, something that I did for my color grade was adjusted the contrast in this. I guess you could just bump up the contrast in your color corrector node, 
but what I did was dropped in a color curves. And this is just where you can make an S curve. Just something simple, you know. If I turn uh, the color curves off, look at, it, look at that difference. That's so much better. All right, the next step is to add a bit of lens distortion. So after the merge, we're gonna hit shift space and type in lens distort. This node right here is only for the paid version of DaVinci Resolve. So we're gonna use this guy. Wait a minute, I got that backwards. This node is only for uh, Studio. This is the free one. We're gonna use the free one. It can do the same thing, it's just less intuitive. Uh, open up your lens distortion model, switch the model to PF track, and then just kind of tweak all the, the settings here. So I did like a, a low distortion, anamorphic squeeze. And then what you gotta do is add a transform node afterwards and just zoom in here. Now, because we have this lens distortion, we're trying to make this look like an actual camera lens. I guess this isn't technically right. What I did was I added a radial blur node after this. Oh my God, what? Hey, it's me from the future. I totally forgot that I upscaled the example clip and I forgot to turn it off, which is why this was bugging out. I, I don't know what that was, but this, you know, this doesn't look good, so. I bring it down a little bit just so you can still see these edges, but they're kind of blurry and a little secret sauce that I did. Um, I didn't want Reyna's hands. These are the, the foreground elements, right? They shouldn't be blurred out. So I took the HSL gear, connected that to the mask, and then um, it just applies the blur to the hands. So in your radial blur, you can go to settings and then apply mask inverted, boom. The next thing I added was chromatic aberration. Unfortunately, you can't just bring up the like tool page and type in chromatic aberration yeah you, it's not there um what you have to do is go into your effects templates fusion tools and then you have chromatic aberration just drag and drop that onto your pipeline you get a little bit of a uh, little something there right the very last thing to do is add a little bit of film grain we're gonna bring up the select tool page and type in film grain i think is this one yep that's the free one and uh you just you just adjust these so i brought my strength down and then the uh size down I, I i said that backwards but you know just something subtle here now this effect is pretty intense on your pc so what i would recommend is opening up um playback render cache check smart you'll get this loading bar right here and you just wait for it to turn blue or you could force it to load everything by uh, going into the deliver page and just playing it and yeah. Anyways, that's how you do this really interesting color grade. If you have any questions, leave a comment or you can join the Discord and either myself or someone in the Discord can help you. The link is down below. That's the end of the video, goodbye.